Welcome to the show. Today we're doing part two of making a bushcraft knife out of a lawnmower blade. Uh, if you want to see part one, I'll have a link up here for you. And I'll have a link down in the description. Basically what we're focusing on today is finishing up the knife. Uh, to do that, I'm drilling holes for the pins that will hold the scales on. And I'm also drilling a few extra holes to kind of lighten up that tang. As you can see, my bevel comes about halfway up the blade, and it's a little bit uneven, so by the end of this, we will have fixed that. Here I'm just drawing out the outline on the material that I'm using, which is, I think, I want to say it's walnut. Uh, it's an old scrap that I had laying around. I know it's hardwood. I think it's walnut. So, of course, after I get that traced out, do a little bit of work on the scroll saw to cut it out. And here I'm just roughing it out, trying to stay away from those lines that I drew so I have a little bit of space to clean things up later. And then clamp things in the vise and uh, put in the pins and drill some holes and test it. Make sure everything fits right. I like to get one hole drilled kind of carefully and then put a pin in and then make sure that I have uh, make sure that I'm staying within those lines and have plenty of wood material on the outside of the tang so that I can trim things down later drill that second hole and then tap things into place with the pins so that's sort of just to make sure that everything fits kind of the way I want it uh, I'll clean it up a little bit on the belt grinder And of course, those scales are awfully thick. And I could just sit there on the belt grinder all day and grind them down and completely fill my workshop with sawdust. But I think we'll do that on the scroll saw instead. And then, of course, I'll disassemble this and just pin the two scales together. Uh, to do some of the cleanup and in particular that's going to be in that uh, ricasso area where the grips will meet the blade of the knife i want to be sure to get that cleaned up without scuffing the knife because i've already done a little bit of work on that blade i want to make sure that i don't mess that up and that's really just uh that's just a rough kind of cut to get most of that material off of there so that I can really begin sculpting down a more ergonomic grip. Once I get that reasonably roughed out, it's time to prep the scales with some epoxy. At this time I got the, uh, this is like some really long drying stuff. I think it says it takes four to six hours to set up or three to three to four hours to set up or something like that. Um, I'm working in a really hot environment. My shop, I think, is I'm sure it's above 100 degrees during these uh, summer months. So the stuff with the shorter setup time, sometimes it's almost unworkable in, I mean, even three or four minutes. So I guess I'm still looking for just the right epoxy. Uh, but, you know, I have other things I can do while I wait. So I figured I would use this stuff, and I can't, I think I wound up even leaving this overnight if I remember right, before I came in and finished it up. But yeah, get it all clamped in place. It's kind of nice to clamp it at this stage because there's a lot of work left to do on the scales, and I really don't have to worry about damaging the surface. So I can really, you know, crank down those clamps and apply some pressure there. You'll see I even use some, you know, like some metal clamps or welding clamps but I really like to put the pressure on as much as I can without damaging the scale material. So those pins were short enough that I didn't really have to cut them off. I just kind of ground them down a little bit with the cutting wheel. And of course I'm gonna pin them into place. So it's okay to leave, uh, leave those standing up, maybe just an eighth of an inch. I used brass pins this time and they pin really nicely. 
much softer than steel, even, even mild steel. And of course it's back to the belt grinder to sand things up, clean things up. And you'll see that I use a, I'm not sure how good a job I did of capturing all of this on film, but I used a lot of different methods, uh, both on the belt grinder and with some other tools to really craft and shape that, uh, that grip the way I wanted it. I think for me, the key here is just to take my time Kind of test it in my palm as I go, see what feels right. And of course, I'm being really careful to stay away from that blade. And again, that's why I, why I more or less shape the parts of the, uh, of the scales that would be in contact with the blade, uh, with the blade end of the tang. I think that's an important thing to do uh, because otherwise, it just gets really difficult to find the right tool to get in there and and uh, shape that part and really sculpt and craft that part of the handle. And here I am cleaning up that, um, I was gonna call it a plunge line, uh, what would you call that? Um, the bevel edge. Um, I really just, I, I, I think I mentioned this in the first video, I had a terrible time getting that straight. And really that's a combination of inexperience on my part and, uh, and also the fact that I was really crafting this from a lot more blade and so, I had done a lot of work with the, um, the anvil and the hammer, kind of pounding things, trying to get things flat, but they, it just never quite got perfectly flat. So there was always a little waviness, a little distortion to that, uh, to the line on that bevel. So I had a pretty good flat bevel going on, um, but I, I decided I would kind of make a, I guess essentially a convex profile for the rest of the blade. And so you can see that there, it, it, I think it turned out pretty well. I'm not looking to put a mirror polish on it or a, you know, a beautiful, you know, 600 grit satin or, or anything like that. So, uh, for now I, w I was satisfied with that. I want this to be a functional knife, uh, but it was also a test bed for a lot of different things as I'm sort of learning the trade. So, and here I'll be using uh, boiled linseed oil. Of course there are, I, I, there's probably a thousand different ways to finish, uh, knife scales. Uh, but I had heard that boiled linseed oil works pretty well, not only on the, on the knife scales, uh, but on the metal itself. So I thought I would give that a try and uh, kind of see how that works. And a lot of this, again, is really experimentation. As, as I'm learning, um, I'm really learning as I go. Once I had that linseed oil applied, let that cure, I think, for a day. The wood needs to absorb that, uh, that linseed oil and then you kind of do another application and it absorbs that. It takes time. I didn't want to rush things too much. But once I was done with that, I started thinking about, uh, you know, what are the features of this knife? What are the features of knives that I like uh, that this knife does not have? And a couple of them came to mind immediately. Uh, one is, uh, I think it's called a sharpening choil. Sometimes they call it a Spanish notch. Um, but that little notch at the base of the blade that just makes sharpening so much easier kind of gives you a, a firm end to your edge so you don't end up wondering where you're going to stop as you're sharpening. So I took a little time to file that in by hand. And since I had the tools out there, I thought I'd, I would try my hand at uh, putting a little jimping in there. And what I realized is that I can't, it's not really something that I can eyeball real well. I think I did okay at the positioning of the jimping, but it got a little bit I would say it got a little bit sharper. The, um, the notches are a little close together, uh, a little closer together than I would have liked. So on a future project, I'd, I'd probably lay that out a little better uh, and try to be a little bit more precise with the jimping. Uh, but it's very functional. It, uh, it feels good in the hand. I think if you used that all day, you'd probably wind up with a sore thumb. Uh, but it definitely gives you, um, gives you some added grip there for doing fine work. I tried a couple different things to get an edge, a real nice edge on there. And uh, I was never fully satisfied with the edge I put on it. I think I'll take a little more time. There are many different aspects of knife making to learn and you, uh, and you, you bring them all together uh, to give yourself the finished project. So I really hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've learned something. And I also would love to hear from you. Uh, some of you undoubtedly have more experience than I do with this type of work. And uh, if you have any advice for me, uh, I'd love to hear that too. So thanks for watching. If you like the show, give me a thumbs up.
subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. And uh, yeah, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day, great evening, great night, whatever it is, whatever time it is, wherever you are. And uh, we will see you in the next video.